And now for a quick look at the big hashtags. Yes, we still have them of the year for this segment on Christmas Day. We're joined by Mr. Neo Watong, our very own SABC Digital News producer. Neo, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Well, sure. I think we got the memo no, certainly we have correct. <laughs> <laughs> Good on us. Mm. So what are the biggest uh, trending uh, hashtags this week? on social media. There were a number of stories this year yeah. that trended on social media, but the biggest one has to be the Verts um, rape junction, the allegations of rape that would rape that was take, that took place at campus. Mm. Um, if you could see the tweets, I mean, it's so sad. Um, Rolani says it's so sad about this rape junction. I hope she is safe. Because they were saying this uh, alleged rapist lives within the same campus, Are which is their serious? junction. So mm -hmm. a whole lot of Verts students really took to social media and spoke about it. And they also highlighted the rape culture and how men are initiated into university. There are certain words we can't say on TV, but yeah. they are meant to say those words. So it's, it's a big to it was a big topic this no, year. No, you know, I find this very interesting. And I think my panelists will agree. Uh, do you remember the, the naked protest over the rape culture that is supposedly very rampant at university? Sophie, let's start with you. Yes, uh, I spoke to the director of uh, women, you know, the UN women, Dr. Yes. Pumzilem Lambumuga, our former deputy president, early this year. He, she really raised a concern that uh, it looks like this problem is rife in South Africa mm. and nothing is being done. I remember her asking me that as media, we must do something about this Absolutely. story. And now look, here we are indeed. This is a serious problem. And mm. I don't know whether the authorities at universities or institution of high learning are really taking this matter seriously because it's there, it's happening. And it's unfortunate because uh, this will have a serious impact in future for those who are victims if it's not properly addressed. Mm. And like I'm saying, the former deputy president of South Africa Dr. Pumzile Mlambunguka, who's the director, UN Women, has raised this issue. And I'm hoping that uh, something will be done. Absolutely, Melo, it's a concerning one. I mean, the fact that the student is still allowed to stay on campus, and I think this was the call that we saw previously because students were saying, these people, we've already got uh, cases against them, but they're still allowed to roam freely around campus. Yeah, I mean, it is uh, very sad in that sense that in South Africa, we seem to have a culture where we do not really take the notion of consent seriously yeah because we sort of like socialize to believe that it is sort of my right if i do xyz mm. and mm. she's agreed to do whatever at no point then can she say no mm. and i think that we need to as a society sort of internalize the thing that if at any point during the process whether you feel that she's invited into her place or whether you've gone out with her if she says no i mean that is the no she's revoked her consent then you can't continue so in terms of like the students still being on campus I think obviously there's legal processes that the university is also very sensitive to, yeah. which uh, I suppose to some extent also uh, may perpetuate the culture in the university where people seem to not be punished. To get away with things, yeah. Even to call it rape culture, yes. even to call it rape culture. It means it's a thing that exists, it it's part of an everyday culture. life. Rape is rape, it's mm. horrible, mm. it mm. cannot be a culture. Absolutely mm. needs to be condemned. Absolutely. Now let's move on to the next big hashtag uh, today. The next big story in South Africa had to be, of course, the droughts that were happening in the country. Yeah. So yeah. we have a map illustrating the provinces and um, the cities that were affected by this um, from Durban, uh, if they could just slide the, the map so that we can have a closer look mm. of it. Mm. But mm. it will just illustrate parts of the country that were affected by drought this year. It was a big story. But I mean, we recently have rains, so I think we are on the right path now. Yeah. Now, Melo, what did you think about the recent drought? Well, the ongoing drought. Uh, the ongoing drought. <laughs> For me, I think a very interesting point. I mean, we've managed to sort of like industrialize the country yeah. to that extent that like in Gauteng, we are getting our water from far away in the valley and so on. But we're still so susceptible to natural phenomena in terms of drought and so on. So I don't know whether we need to have a better water retention system in the country. That's a national conversation perhaps that we should be talking about because we can't be saying that we have had droughts for two years and we've run out of water supply. Mm. Surely some meteorologist or somebody is able to predict some of these things mm. and we can have better contingency around it. Absolutely. Sophie, what do yes, you think? In particular, the Sadek region was yeah. uh, affected. Uh, you have countries such as Zimbabwe, Lesotho. Mm. Currently, they are battling to deal with the impact of the drought. Mm. But uh, the African Union has established what is called the old early warning system programs. Mm -hmm. And maybe in future, this will help us. 
so that we know exactly what's coming and the countries can prepare, but also to have a, 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 a source of uh, income or money that could be set aside to ensure that they assist those countries that are affected. That mm. will be part of the uh, responsibility of this organization or this commission that will deal with issues of uh, uh, drought. Absolutely. No, we're waiting for, uh, of course, uh, the implementations mm -hmm. from the recent uh, 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 conference that was taking place out in Morocco. So yeah. we'll definitely find out okay. what happened at the climate change and what happens in terms of rolling out uh, those goals. Let's look at the next, uh, the next big hashtag now. The next big one has to be Donald Trump winning the presidency. I mean, Is it still mess dominating? Of he can speak about it <laughs> way perfectly than I would. But yeah, um, social media was very set up buzz. People were shocked that he won, but... It happens. Uh, <laughs> Americans have the right to vote for whoever they want, and it shows the maturity of democracy in the country. But if we read one tweet, it says, are there no more subsidiaries the similarities, similarities yeah. sorry, between the <laughs> Americans and those who voted for Donald Trump? They're speaking basically about the Brexit and Donald Trump. They laughed when he said he was running to, to be the president, and they are not laughing now. So, yeah, people are shocked more than anything. <laughs> I'm still shocked, Melo. <laughs> yeah, I think for me also, I was hoping very much that Hillary Clinton would win, not per se because she does not have faults of her own, but because I think her platform that she ran on was a bit more progressive than Donald Trump. Yeah. I mean, Donald Trump has come on a wave now of sort of like white supremacy that we're seeing in the U.S. I and mean, we've seen recent media reports of people going, hail Donald Trump, like sort of channeling... Uh, out of Hitler and so yeah. on. So I think that is very concerning, especially for minority populations in the US. Ish. It's very worrying indeed. Sophie, you were there during the elections. <laughs> I mean, how was the atmosphere? And Even what did you make of the surprise win? <laughs> Even before the elections, I was really following uh, the story. Yeah. And, uh, of course, many had predicted that uh, Hillary, Hillary Clinton will win. But I remember I attended a function at one of the uh, U.S. offices here in Johannesburg, where we were actually making inputs after the first uh, debate and yeah. we were watching the clips. And I remember I was a lone voice when I said, guys, you know what? What Donald Trump is saying speaks to what people want. Mm -hmm. uh, we may say, as experts and those people who understand issues much better, that it's impossible to implement those promises or do the manifesto, but that, that's what the Americans are saying, the mm. majority, because it's a different setup. In South Africa, you have the blacks, which are a majority, but in the US, it's a complete different picture. You have uh, whites who are the majority, and yeah. therefore, particularly those who are conservative, were not happy with uh, uh, the election of uh, uh, Obama, and therefore, this was for them time to change or to or two reverse terms even. or to, yeah. to, 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 to claim back or, I don't know, fight back, <laughs> so to put it, you recall DA fight back. So it happened and uh, he was speaking to those who wanted change, particularly, you know, populist statements mm -hmm. itself sometimes and people mm. uh, think that this is the right thing, this is the right person who can really make things happen, and that's what happened. But many, many, particularly in New York, because uh, Hillary Clinton is quite popular in New York, uh, they were very disappointed. People were crying, people mm, mm, literally. Mm. And we literally saw protests uh, yeah. right yes, across the yes, states yes. as well. Yes, they are continuing. And, and there's a big march on the 20th of January mm, uh, mm, during mm. the inauguration. Uh, it's a women's march. They call it a two million women's march. Wow. Wow. You know what I find interesting is the fact that uh, Donald Trump has made it known that he's going to renege on some deals that uh, the U.S. had signed under the Obama administration on the first day of office. That is on the 20th of January. So we are all waiting with bated breath to actually see what happens there. Now, go enjoy the rest of your Christmas. Thank you so much for Thank joining so us. Much, Thank you so much.